So he drove us out in the middle of the river trying to get more money from us. You stop the engine when we're in the river and you try to get a hundred from us. Oh, I, I love your Ferrari, sir. It's very cheap, my friend. Yeah, it Get makes around. noises too, like a horse. Wow, can we get in there? Wow. If you, if, if you give someone a hundred Egyptian pounds, they'll look the other way. My name is Adam, my horse is named Lady Gaga. Okay, so we're in the back of Michael Schumacher's Ferrari. Michael Schumacher, how was your season this year? Did you have a good season? Uh, we're about to take a boat across the Nile. Right now we're on the east side and we want to get to the west. So let's see if we can solicit a boat and uh, get over to the other side. We want to check out some of these museums here. And all we've done is the west side, so let's see if we can get over. Maybe we can get that boat right there. Okay, so we found our boat. We found a guy, he said it was seven pounds. I don't believe it yet, but we're about to find out. So yeah, let's check it out. So he, these are all the boats here. Uh, when we got over here before, it was 50, which is like a dollar, you know, super cheap. Yeah, check it out. The, look, they've got different seats, tables. There's a guy there with the Brazilian flag and then Bob Marley on the back. How's that work, Benny? Eh? All right. Wow. Where did we go? Just, oh, okay. which one? Anyway. Huh? Okay. Seven, yeah. Thirty-one, uh, five. Thirty-one, five. Oh, you say seventeen. No, wait. Seven or seventy? Which one? You say seven. Seven is seven. No. You say seven. Seventy. Thirty-one Egyptian. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Seventy. Seventy. Not seven. Seventy. I am sorry. No, no. That that's seventy. That's seven. I am sorry. Very different. We can pay 25 25 or we can leave. 25 25? Okay. No problem. No problem. Have a nice Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be seven. Okay, so if you want to get over here, you can actually get a ferry for 7.5 Egyptian pounds, which is 20 cents, something like that. You can have a local experience. It's actually really cool. It's not really about the money. It's about the people you meet, the ride you take, and do as the locals do. If you want something more private like this, uh, one dollar uh, for everyone. You can take 10 people, one people, it doesn't matter. But, yeah. huh? uh, maybe later. Just one, one way, one way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, he wants our business coming back as well. Wow. Yeah, so today, that's what we're going to check out right there. We'll see in a second. And maybe we'll explain it then too. Here's some Nile cruises you can take along the Nile. You can actually take one all the way to Cairo. It takes around 12 days minimum, all the way to around 16 days. Super expensive though. It's like uh, 6,000, something like that. Absolutely crazy. Alright. So. What do you think of the what do you think of the boat? Are you having a good boat experience? Yeah, it's super refreshing. Yeah? Yeah. It's like super boring. Yeah, we had a long day yesterday. We had a lot of uh, pyramid sun. Yeah. Very red. I look like uh, I look like a blatant tourist. Oh, I like the Christmas decorations. The Christmas decoration. I'm not sure what that one is. That's like a it's for a cat, I think. Cat. Let's have a look here. Okay, so if you ever wondered how the magic happens, check it out, look. It's got a little Yamaha engine on the boat here, little seat. And uh, yeah, we gotta leave, let me go. <laughs> Shukran, thank you. All right. Because the people get confused. I am sorry. No, don't worry. I'm just trying to tell you so you can learn. Okay. You know. Now. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Yalla, Hajj He he knows the difference between seven and seventy. No, but he was thinking it's seven. 
seven is seventy. So uh, okay. we were thinking it was seven. Then he says seven, and then he put the zero, and I was like, hey, this is seventy. I, I knew it wasn't seven, but I was waiting to see what the amount was. But uh, he disclosed it before we started. But uh, yeah, funny. But we pay fifty, so that's what we paid going across. So it's okay. But yeah, we're here. Wow. Every little experience is, is a lesson in bartering, getting a deal. It's great. It's a nice little fight every hour or so. Fight for your right. Not to party, but to, uh, well, you know, to do tourism. Okay, we're on the east side now. We're going to check out Luxor Temple. Check it out, you can actually see it for free. A little free peek over this little fence. It's alright, isn't it? Wow. Oh, I, I love your Ferrari, sir. It's very cheap, my friend. Yeah, you it makes around. noises too, like a horse. You go around, you go to the market, you go to downtown. It's very cheap, my friend. Maybe <coughs> my uh, two hours, we're going to look at the temple, and then we'll come back here. Back here? Yes, uh, two hours. Two, two hours. hours. Two hours. What's your name? Thank you, sir. Roger. 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 Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, my friend. See you later. See you later. Okay. <laughs> Today I am Roger. Roger from Cape Verde. No, that's not believable. Roger from Finland. How about that? Yeah, it's good. All right. <laughs> yeah, Roger from Finland. Vitu. Okay, it looks like we're at the Luxor Temple now. Here's the entry. Uh, like most sites here, you'll pay by card only and there'll be a guy sort of hassling you in the line. Um, the, the standard business, really. So we'll get our ticket here, then we'll have a little butcher's inside. I've seen the Luxor in Las Vegas, but I've never seen the actual Luxor. So, uh, first, time for, first time for everything, I guess. Okay, we have our tickets. Uh, 400 Egyptian pounds right now. That's around $9.50, something like that. So we're ready to hit the temple. Let's go. Okay, we just made it into the temple here. It looks absolutely crazy. I'll show you in a second because the sun is right over there, so you'll get a better shot. Yes. To, to be honest, um, oh, it's so much difference between here and Giza. Giza is just one big hassle fest. It's so much more peaceful in Luxor. <laughs> Perhaps not the city center, but it's so much more comfortable as a tourist to come here and just enjoy and relax. And wow, right behind me, I think that's called Sphinx Avenue. They have all these sphinxes for two kilometers. Maybe we'll check that out in a second. Uh, but yeah, the temple itself, look at this. It's cool, isn't it? This makes you wonder how they can even build this. The statues look like one solid piece. And there's a yeah, huge obelisk right in front. Let's get a closer little look here. Okay, wow. So here's the entrance. The sun is like immediately overhead, so it's super difficult to even see what I'm recording. But uh, I hope you, hope you get the idea at least. So there's the obelisk there, look at that. Wow. Let's have a little a little close up here. There we have uh, the nuke. There we have a bird. Bird what? Little insect. Wow. And here, these look like monkeys, almost like a baboon. Probably isn't, but pretty impressive, isn't it? Up here you have the reign of a thousand Paloma, pigeon. But pigeons at a lot of temples actually. I think they like a bit of temple, the, the old Egyptian pigeon. Yeah, this, this must be a granite statue here. Absolutely huge. And what you see on a lot of these is a little mini statue usually standing between the legs or next to them. Uh, wow. So I have a, a few videos I've uploaded on Egypt. We went to Giza, um, East and West Luxor, various other places so you can check those out if you want well, yeah absolutely crazy you can see how big it is in comparison to your average sort of person there let's have a little look over this one right here it's just amazing how 
well they're preserved considering they're thousands of years old. <coughs> Nuts, isn't it? Okay, so we're inside the court here, Ramesses Dos, second. Inside the temple. Wow, look at this. Absolutely crazy, isn't it? The scale of it. So when you when you whip the camera out, they all disappear. Ah, uh, wow. Even got some modern windows up there. <laughs> so what you see in a lot of the temples is there are a lot of restorations. Uh, you can see here all the repair work here. Some of these columns might have been reconstructed from rubble that you find in the area, maybe across the valley, maybe across the river. You know, things get moved around. We had uh, all sorts of different people living here in the last lots of years. Uh, so that's why you'll see, you know, almost new things in the same area. I'm trying to think how we do it in the UK, it's, it's a bit of a mismatch, but I think for the most part when I see ruins in the UK, uh, they're kind of left to crumble, they're supported a bit, but I don't, I don't think we really add mortar to it and sort of prop it up like that. I suppose there's not really a right answer, is there, but certainly it looks impressive. Can't argue with that. But when you go inside tombs like Ramesses 5 and 6, like the face of that tomb is in the British Museum, so they have a replica on there. Um, so some things aren't very clear unless you do your sort of research before or after when you can sort of learn about what you're seeing. There's not too many signs here, so it's hard to sort of read and learn about the things. Uh, unless you have a tour guide, that is, then I suppose you get a different experience. Yeah, look at that. So I guess his kid is a bit older, look, he's sort of stood next to him rather than between the legs. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> yeah, it's absolutely crazy. You always see pictures and videos on the internet, but it's, it's so much different when you see it in person. And it's, it's very different from museums you see in other countries. You can freely touch these things. I don't really recommend it, but um, you see a lot of people climbing over a lot of things. When we went to a temple the other day, if you give the guy a bit of money, he lets you climb up some of the walls. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that, but if you, if, if you give someone a hundred Egyptian pounds, they'll look the other way. Gun in hand or no gun in hand, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so... Uh, Certainly an interesting culture. I'm sure any historian would uh, wince at that. Maybe wince is a weak word, but you know what I mean. Wow, look, the facial features on that one are almost completely gone. It's, it's pretty cool having some that are way more intact and worn away ones and you can kind of see how it's been degraded but you also have an image of what it's supposed to look like especially with those obelisks outside we have one full obelisk kind of and one little stump so it's yeah it's amazing to sort of compare those two there yeah all of that is complete restoration there i don't see any original blocks up there Yeah, and what you see a lot of is different kind of rocks in one place. They won't all use the same material. You see different statues of various importance made of different materials. Uh, you see that with sarcophagus as well, like some using granite, some using other materials. And I, I, I imagine it's a reflection on the importance of the thing they're trying to represent. Whereas the columns are in a more sort of stone that's easier to source. It's pretty cool you can grab a guide in here. It's almost like the, the guides uh, work in the system as well. When we went to the museum in Cairo, they were saying, oh, you need a guide, you need a guide. Oh, you need to choose me, you need to choose me, please, please. And it's like, wow, wow, I've never seen that before. In, in the UK, certainly, it's almost the opposite. It's like you have to try and find a guide and it's almost like the opposite. The nose in that almost looks like a bit of Lego. You can kind of pluck it out and, and 
pluck it in. <laughs> and again, that one's uh, a completely different material as well. You can almost tell by looking at it. It's almost like a marble or alabaster. Is that how we say it? I don't know. Alabaster, yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, you can even see the etchings, even in the back of these monuments and statues as well. Everything tells a story or at least a description of something or other. I have no idea what it says. I'm not going to pretend I do know, but it's definitely quite impressive all the same. Bit of a free tour guide for you right there. You're welcome. Okay, that's run away. He doesn't want it. I guess they are in a Ramadan too. <laughs> we will find somebody more hungry. Yeah, the mo mosquitoes. They are super hungry. <laughs> so we're in the middle of the temples Plaza de Armas. Wow. Pretty cool. So I think, I think, no, I don't think anything, never mind. But check this out. Look, look at that little doggo. I noticed the doggos here, at least in the temple anyway, they have tags in their ear. Oh, you're missing an eye. Where's your eye gone, huh? Where is it? Yeah, they got little tags in their ear. I think that's the first time I've seen a, a tagged doggo here. So let's have a look then, let's have a look around here. Ah. Oh yeah, no, no stepping up there. Yeah, it looks like it's a uh, work in progress over here. Still piecing things together. That seems to be the case with Pretty much every attraction here, it's just an ongoing process of piecing everything together. You can see these walls here are slowly being jigsawed together. Wow. It's amazing, isn't it? You can see these were all columns as well, once upon a time. But Certainly not now, anyway. So a lot of these places, uh, especially the tombs anyway, um, they could be in development pretty much the whole lifetime of the current pharaoh. Sometimes they're left unfinished. Temples, tombs, and then the next successor to the throne if you will would end up finishing the job of the temple or monument for them I think um, I think that section back there I think the the guy died and Tutankhamun finished the inscriptions on the wall or well, almost finished them anyway but yeah sometimes it's left into the hands of the the next one to kind of finish that job for them. You can imagine how long things like this takes with limited tools. At least limited in comparison to what we have today anyway. Wow, what's this? This looks like Tomb Raider, you know where you kind of like bounce out of this hole? Oh, some uh, electric cables are... Wow, it's in here then. Oh, it's just a... Uh... Hall of Rocks. Yeah, it's crazy. You just see inscriptions everywhere of some ancient language. I'm kind of curious who actually understood this. I imagine royalty did at least, 
perhaps the people doing the inscriptions, people in professional trades, perhaps. But would your everyday Egyptian understand this? Is it a language, a written language they could read and understand? Was there a verbal language lost to time? It does make you wonder. Because there are reasons the ancient languages kind of dissolve, disappear, left forgotten in time. Is that the reason? Is that the reason why we have education today? Perhaps things won't be lost in time, but then again this still happens. For example, can you find someone who fixes shoes on the west coast of the United States? Very hard to do. <laughs> so, you do get like master trades that can get forgotten in time. You do get languages forgotten in time. And it still happens today. I mean, now we're a bit more lucky, we can sort of record things a bit better. But even then, it still happens even today. Oh. It does make you think, doesn't it? I think that's why uh, I, I like traveling. It's not only meeting cultures, but it, you kind of have time to think. Uh, beyond, you know, your typical nine to five or what you might want to watch on Netflix, for example. You actually think about questions and you can sort of give your own answers to them. You can talk to people with different heritage, different upbringing, have a discussion, have a debate, have an argument, but at least at the end of it, you can learn something if you're willing to learn, which again, learning from people you disagree with is seems to be quite hard these days. Um, many people don't seem to want to be friends anymore after a minor disagreement. I, I would call it a debate, but um, yeah, uh, a lot of people seem to get offended over a, a debate or a discussion, and it seems to prevent having an open mind, which I thought was a good thing, but perhaps it's just the world we live in these days. Look at these walls here. Wow, can we get in there? Wow. I'd pay a shekel or two to get in that hall and have a look around. That's amazing, isn't it? Little pigeon. Pigeons are rolling it here. They don't pay the $9 entry fee, they're just on free play. Wow. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Can't believe it. Let's have a little little butchers in here, see what's see what's going on. Oh, seems to be where the, the magic happens here. Endless corridors of Free tourism right there. I heard Alexander the Great and he pointed to that wall. It's got a freebie there without giving without giving what seems like a mandatory tip. Wow, pretty cool, isn't it, Luxor Temple? If anyone's been to Las Vegas and they saw the Luxor Hotel Casino, you can sort of see uh, the inspiration they got. <laughs> but what, what I always found funny about that uh, casino is their main hotel building is not in Luxor, it's in Giza. I think the only thing they have is the Sphinx Avenue, which we'll see in a second. But uh, yeah, wow, absolutely crazy. Looks so temple. Yeah, that is good. Hey, it's good. So the temple was pretty cool. Right outside the temple. Check it out, Sphinx Avenue. It's, uh, can we go on the stones? I don't know. Security keeps us uh, Check out all these sphinxes here. 
Uh, I looked on Google Maps, I cheated. It goes for about two kilometers, two kilometers of sphinxes. Eventually the heads will run out and then you'll only see the bases um, way down there. I don't think most people go that far, but you can follow this avenue all the way down and see another site. So it's a really cool walk all the way down there. Wow. It's pretty cool, isn't it? What's this contraption here? Let's have a little look. So yes, yeah, so some of them have had restoration work on the bases there, and the statues themselves. Well, this is the most uneven path. <laughs> I, I was going to run down there. Might be fun. But yeah, it's crazy. Absolutely loads. Yeah, you can kind of see the Sphinx is thinning out a bit there. But yeah, it's amazing. Wow. And look how, look how many people are here too. It's, yeah, it's mad. One thing I noticed about coming to Egypt, whether it's Cairo or Luxor, is a lot of the tourists will just robotically go from landmark to landmark to landmark in a taxi, a bus, something like that. So when you're actually like roaming the streets, looking around, there's no tourists there whatsoever. You're pretty much dealing with locals. And if you can get away from the tourist attractions, you can actually meet some cool people, have some conversations, they'll take selfies with you, ask you what your favorite football team is, and show you maybe their business, their house, uh, their family. Very personable. I found uh, the same thing when I visited Colombia as well. I ended up having uh, a chicken dinner with one of my friend's grandparents and parents. Uh, none of them spoke English, but we're just kind of communicating with the, well, with hands, gestures. Uh, Google Translate helped a bit as well. Um, but yeah, if you want like a real experience, it's very easy to do and it's a lot cheaper as well. You don't have to pay tour guides, uh, buses, taxis, nothing like that. So for me, it's a win-win. And look how dead it is now. E even though the tourist attraction is just 200 meters that way. Um, yeah, absolutely dead. <laughs> but... <laughs> Even more so if you go into one of the nearby villages, nearby towns as well. Um, if you want to look at one of our adventures where we rented some bikes and went through the villages, I'll, I'll try and remember to pop it in the description below so you can check it out. Uh, otherwise, it's on my channel. But yeah, it's so a real experience. You can learn about culture. It's, it's a lot more interesting. But as for Sphinx Avenue, pretty cool, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. So one thing I noticed about here is there's no signs telling you where you can go, where you can't go. Uh, sometimes the locals get more freedom with that, but if they see a tourist sort of going on here, you could get shouted out, a man with a gun might arrive and sort of ask you for your whatever. Um, so it's a bit, um, there's no rules basically, there's no rules. If you're not sure, either do it quickly, do it secretly, or don't do it. That, that seems to be a good rule of thumb to go by here. Wow. Yeah, here's the excavations. Look. 1961 to 1964. This looks like when they dug it all up. Wow. We finally got on our horse. We finally found a price we liked and we got on. <laughs> so, not too bad. We're just heading to the river. I tried to find a car mechanic. I have another YouTube channel where I fix cars. So we tried to find a car mechanic to get a video of his workshop. Uh, it didn't work out. Maybe we can see that later. But uh, yeah, he's giving us a ride to the river. What's your name, sir? My name is Adam. Adam, nice to meet you. Sorry. <laughs> nice to meet you. So Adam is giving us a ride to the river and then we're gonna hop on back to the west bank. My name is Adam, my horse is named Lady Gaga. No way! Lady <laughs> Lady yes, Gaga! Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Your horse is American. <laughs> Okay, we're getting the boat back now. So, uh, yeah, 
did you enjoy the day? It wasn't a bad day, was it? We met a guy called Adam and a horse called Lady Gaga. We saw the Luxor Museum. We, yeah, there's a lot of British flags around here. But then again, we've seen Brazilian flags and even this boat is called Blue Peter. Yeah, good day today, anyway. So he drove us out in the middle of the river trying to get more money from us. He said, oh, well, I'm gonna take you there. That's 50 and that's 100. But we already agreed the price uh, for 50 to go over there. So it's just weird he cut the motor out completely trying to get more money out of us. I said, just take us back then. So now we're actually going where we need to go for the normal price, go figure. Uh, it's, it's just a bit sad when things like that happen. It kind of ruins it for other tourists. But uh, respect to you guys that do it properly and you're not just scamming people for the fun of it. And that way you'll probably even get a tip off people as well if you're honest with them. So now he's not going to get any tip. I would have given him 100, so now he's getting 50. It is what it is. Yes. Excuse me? Uh, yes, Kerti. Huh? Kerti, yes, tomorrow. Yes, uh, Mo. Yes, we look up. Yes, Bala Lai. No, we yes. were leaving today and then you changed the price and to be honest, I don't like that. Okay. Well, I have. Yes, Thank you. Prophet, this is don't do that because you lose clients mm -hmm. when you change mm -hmm. the price. Like okay, what the rep? What the rep? Yes, tips, my friend. Uh, excuse me. Huh? Yes, tips. Huh? Tips. You changed the price. You stopped the engine when we're in the river and you tried to get a hundred from us. So if you didn't do that, I would have given you a lot more. But it's a lesson to be learned, you know? Okay, so we're in the back of Michael Schumacher's Ferrari. Michael Schumacher, how was your season this year? Did you have a good season? Do you need the air condition? Huh? Air condition. Air condition, yes please. Put it, put it on maximum. Ah, see, which way? Which way? Yes? Okay, that's okay. That's okay. With me, it's okay. Alright. Get some petrol. On a three minute journey. Get some petrol. <laughs> Wow, getting the gas here in Egypt. Just a couple of guys with a big wad of cash. You just give them a bit of money. You can get 80, 80 or 92. Pretty cool, isn't it? I failed. <laughs> I failed. He's banned me from the boat. <laughs> yeah. I can go this way, round to this side. You want? No, I went there yesterday. It's okay. No, 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 no. It's okay, yeah. No, just uh, here is perfect. Thank you. Actually, no, left, left. Uh, just there. Uh, left, yeah. yeah. Uh, right here. It's okay. Yes. This is my family house. Yeah? So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for another adventure coming soon. If you like the content, like and subscribe. It helps us a lot. Please. <laughs> Okay, take care.